Hello and welcome to module 40 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, in the last two modules, we looked at a theory called RRK theory to look at rate constants calculated at constant energy. Throughout the course, we have been looking at calculating rate constants at constant temperature. Now we have been asking the question, what if we have a different ensemble where the energy is constant, not temperature. In the last two modules, we looked at a simple model, which we call as the RRK model. Uh, today, we will do uh, extend that model and uh, fill in the deficiencies of that very simple model. Uh, the model that I am discussing today is called RRKM model, which is uh, Rice, Ramsberger, Kessel and Marcus. Okay. So, uh, what I am teaching today is there in Steinfeld, Francisco and Hayes in chapter 10.7. I have also given you the original reference for those who are extra interested. So, the history of uh, this work is as follows. In uh, late 1920s, 27 and 28, uh, these three authors Rice, Ramsberger and Cassell uh, formulated this theory for unimolecular decay. They were trying to understand if a molecule is decaying at a constant energy, uh, how do I calculate the rate constant and match the experimental data. And so we studied their efforts in the last uh, two modules. But that actually does not work well and we discussed that as well. That is a very simple model with a lot of deficiencies enter Marcus. Marcus is a truly a pioneer in chemical kinetics. Uh, this was, uh, he was doing a postdoc with Rice actually, uh, one, uh, of this RRK, the R of uh, RRK. And he was actually before that doing some experimental work. But uh, Marcus was a genius and uh, before like when he joined uh, Rice as a postdoc, he, he started looking at papers for the last several decades. He just started reading and reading and reading. And finally, uh, Rice and one more person, he, they gave him this problem. You know this uh, several decades ago in uh, 20s, uh, there was this problem of unimolecular decay that never got resolved, you know. Uh, we do not know how to deal with it. Marcus, it took him basically only a few months and he solved this problem. And uh, that he published a few papers, one I have cited here in 52, he published a few more papers in 53 and that is it. After that Marcus changed his field and he was looking at electron transfer uh, for practically a good portion of his life. But these few papers he published are authoritative works, they are the final word on this subject on unimolecular decay. And even today you can open any physical chemistry journal, there will be at least one paper that calculates rate constant using this RRKM theory. So, let us uh, study what Marcus had proposed. Okay. So, we will do a quick recap of what we covered in a long time ago in module 27. We wrote an expression to calculate rate constant at a given temperature earlier. We integrated over dividing surface over momenta. Uh, this is the density. This is a transmission factor that we have discussed for some time. And this is the finally the flux. Okay. Uh, transition state theory assumes this rho to be the thermal uh, density, this is the Boltzmann density. Okay. And for chi, we put chi equal to 1 if p1 is greater than 0, otherwise chi equal to 0. We put a very simple expression for chi. And if we assume that we can derive transition state theory, this is the expression we get out of it. Excellent. We are going to essentially follow this approach now. So, this was really the genius of Marcus. This uh, since I am presenting in this fashion now I have told you the answer. It might look trivial, but it is not. Uh, when you have a flurry of ideas, what is the right way to think about it? What is the first equation to write? That is the question and that shows the geniusness. Uh, and uh, Marcus said, all right. So, uh, I will write the same expression, perhaps I have to just use different values of this rho and chi. Right. So, this rho earlier was for at a given temperature. So, now I must use a rho at a given energy. Okay. And what he said is this is then equal to a delta function minus E. 
h of x comma p is the Hamiltonian which represents the energy. So, I am saying that rho at that given energy uh, this Hamiltonian must be equal to that energy ok. And chi we will start with the same as transition state theory, transition state theory after all is very successful. So, chi is equal to 1 if p 1 is greater than 0 equal to 0 if p 1 less than 0. So, that is going to be our starting point. This is the expression we want to simplify. All right. So, we have changed our density uh, from a, con a temperature density to a energy density. I have made a mistake. So, let me correct my mistake. This should be normalized. Remember that even in the previous slide, our rho t was normalized. We had this full integral there. So, we must write a similar integral as well here. Uh, that integral will now be dq dp delta of h of x comma p minus e ok. So, this delta is essentially constraining those x and p points for which the Hamiltonian takes a value e. So, the energy of the system is equal to whatever I want it to be ok. So, just a uh, uh, oh sorry I had uh, put in this nice animation that I had forgotten fine, but I have written what this rho is supposed to be, this is supposed to be E ok. Ok, uh, let me give you a little bit of properties of this uh, Dirac delta function, this function here is called the Dirac delta function ok. So, uh, this can get into very deep uh, mathematical details, but I am not going to go into that. We are going to study only a few important properties of Dirac delta function. First is what if I integrate Dirac delta function multiplied by some other function and let us say I am sorry let me write this as x naught and integral from a to b this is equal to f of x naught if x naught lies between a and b equal to 0 otherwise ok. So, the Dirac delta function can be thought of as 0 everywhere. and uh, sorry let me write delta of x minus x naught and it takes a very very large value at x naught ok. So, it is 0 everywhere except at this x naught where it is blowing up. So, uh, one other property I can write is if I integrate over all space then I get f of x naught because well x naught has to lie between minus infinity to plus infinity. And uh, one final property that we will use today is that uh, Dirac delta function is even which should be obvious if I invert it I still get the same function. So, Dirac delta function is even ok. Uh, so, before we move forward actually this expression here is much harder to evaluate than what we had for uh, constant temperature believe it or not because of this Dirac delta function. It is not easy to deal with this because this is uh, h couples all these q a and p. So, it is not easy for me to simplify the integral over dp 1. Earlier we had e to the power of minus h that I could separate out uh, the p 1 term and integrate it out separately. So, it is a slightly more complex. So, I will have to introduce a little bit more language, a few more terms uh, added to my language so that I can uh, simplify this expression a little bit more. So, I define two quantities for me now. One is called g of E which represents the density of states at energy E and w which represents the total number of states with energy less than E ok. So, if I am at a given energy E how many what is the density of states how many uh, states per unit energy are present at that energy that is G of E and W of E is the total number of states that will be there between 0 to that energy E. So, what I can do is uh, start writing expressions for these G of E is then given by an integral over dx, integral over dp and delta 
of h of x comma p minus e. So, I integrate over all space, all possible configurations of x and p and I find for what values of x and p is my Hamiltonian equal to the energy. So, that will give me the density that will tell me how many states per unit energy are there that is what delta is doing. Okay. So, that you can think of as the definition of g. Okay. If this is the density of states and I want to find the total number of states between 0 and e, well that task is simple. I must integrate g between 0 and e. g is telling me the density at that given energy. So, if I want go from 0 to e and integrate it out, I will get the total number of states. So, I write this okay. and as a consequence I can also write uh, g of e equal to dw over d. So, if I differentiate it uh, dw over d e you see that I will immediately get g of e. Okay. All right. So, uh, let us look at this expression of w uh, little bit d e prime g of e prime. Well, let us put in the expression of g. It is dx dp delta of h of x comma p minus e. Let me switch around the integrals a little bit. Now, look at this function, what do we get? This is equal to 1 if h of x comma p, sorry this should be e prime is less than e equal to 0 otherwise, agreed? That is what this thing says. So, if h is less than e then I get uh, uh, 1 otherwise I get 0. Well, what does that mean? Imagine a graph of x comma p, since I have a 2D screen I can only make 2D plots. Uh, I have imagined some contour lines or at given energy, this is let us say energy E1 contour line, E2 energy contour line, E will have its own contour line, uh, I am sorry it is not E1, it is E. So, this function, this function that is there is 1 if I am inside this contour. f is 1 here, okay, where I am calling this whole thing as f. Agreed? Outside I have f equal to 0. So, all I am doing is integrating over all x and p which uh, is uh, completely uh, covered by this contour line. So, this is nothing but the volume or the area whatever word you want to use of the contour h equal to e. So, I look at this contour for h equal to e in a higher dimension you will get this higher dimensional surface and I look at the volume enclosed. Okay, so, let me just say volume enclosed. So, that is the physical interpretation of w. W is the area or volume occupied by phase space and closed by this contour line. All right. So, we will do one example. We will calculate G and W for a 1D harmonic oscillator. Okay. So, my Hamiltonian, I have only 1D. Uh, actually, I have made a mistake. Let me correct my mistake. I had forgotten my factors of h. Remember this is an integral of x and p uh, and an integral of x and p have dimensions. 
if you remember our discussion on partition functions, I have h to the power of 3 n that is what I had forgotten to write. So, let me correct that. So, this becomes a true density, I do not have any factors of h floating around. So, we divide by h to the power of 3 n just like what we did in partition functions. Okay. So, uh, I apologize I had forgotten that let me correct all of these things here as well. I will have uh, this divided by h to the power of 3 n here as well h to the power of 3 n here as well. So, volume enclosed divided by h to the power of 3 n. So, volume in units of h to the power of 3 n. Okay. So, that minor correction. Okay. So, uh, the Hamiltonian for a harmonic oscillator is this. Okay. So, if I have to find W, I have to find the area enclosed by the contour line. So, let us say this is equal to E. Okay. So, I have to draw the contour line for H is equal to E yeah, and find the area enclosed by this contour line. So, uh, you see this expression, this is actually an equation of an ellipse. So, I will rewrite this slightly in this fashion. You notice, uh, uh, let me get my energy also in here. So, let me correct that. So, let me put my energy also in the denominator. Okay, so, I have done nothing, I have just reorganized it my equation here and make it look like a equation of an ellipse. So, an ellipse essentially looks like this where this is a and this is b. So, for me a is equal to 2 e root 2 e over m omega square and b is equal to root 2 m e. So, I, uh, I know the formula for area of an ellipse. So, the area w of a will be nothing but area divided by h, I have only one dimension here, so h to the power of 1 is equal to pi a into b divided by h, uh, happily mass cancel, I get root 2 e into root 2 e which is uh, 2 pi e divided by h omega well, I will get E over h bar omega, where h bar of course is h over 2 pi. You start seeing some good expressions, do not you? h bar omega is somehow related to harmonic oscillators, quantum mechanically. So, let us move forward, let us uh, see what we get. Now, g of E is nothing but dw over d, that d. So, this is equal to d over d of E over h bar omega which is equal to 1 over h bar omega. So, the density of states is 1 over h bar omega. Just think of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanically the energy is given as uh, n plus half h bar omega, right. We get equal spacing like this quantum mechanically. So, uh, what it means is even quantum mechanically, what is the density of states? I have one state per h bar omega energy. That is what this figure really means. If I look at one quanta of h bar omega, I will have one state in it, which is also what I get classically. So, that was a little aside. So, now let me finish the proof of transition state theory at constant energy. Now that we understand this g of n e and a little bit of the Dirac delta functions. Okay. So, we start with the expression that we wrote earlier. Uh, uh, let me just clarify a few things from earlier. Integral over dividing surface d q 
is nothing but it is a shorthand notation for BQ2 to DQ3N. H T S of Q comma P is nothing but H of Q1 equal to Q1 dagger and all other variables are varying as they wish. Okay, so, this is just shorthand notation just to keep my life simple nothing more. Okay, so, first let us look at what we had in the denominator we had this. Now, we have defined this G as a density. So, we quickly notice this N is nothing but G of E into H to the power of 3N. Okay. So, my K becomes 1 over H to the power of 3N G of E into all this integral dq dp1 dp2 to dp3n and delta of h minus e into p1 over n. Okay, fine. What do we do next? We are actually going to use the same set of approximations as we have used for deriving a transition state theory at constant temperature. So, the next assumption I am going to make uh, sorry uh, is H T S is separable. So, this is equal to I will say is equal to P 1 square over 2 m plus V of Q 1 dagger plus H prime of everything else. So, Again, that is also what we assumed when we were doing transition state theory, that is the same thing we do now. All right. Uh, this is nothing but E A. Okay. So, what we get? I get these constants out, G R of E. Uh, one thing I had forgotten to mention, this N that I am calculating is only over the reactant Hamiltonian, just like we did in transition state theory. So, I write for that only G R okay, just to signify that I am integrating only over the reactant side and not on the product side. Okay. Uh, I have uh, still this giant integral that takes me 100 minutes to write d p 2 integral of d p 3 n delta now, H I will expand H prime as a function of all this minus E. All right. Have we achieved, are we really achieving anything? Let us see. So, we get this big expression. Now, we will do a little bit more uh, mathematical jugglery, just a little bit of hocus pocus. We will transform our variables now. I am going to define an E dagger as E minus P1 square over 2m minus E a. Okay, focus, focus. Abra kadabra. So, D E dagger is equal to E is a constant. Remember, I am calculating everything at that energy E minus uh, P1 over m dp1 ea is also a constant so da dagger equal to this so uh, this is the one i am looking at you see p1 over m dp1 here i get the same thing here that's why i did that transformation now if p1 is equal to 0 e dagger equal to e minus ea i am trying to find my limits okay what is the maximum value e dagger can take Note that uh, I have a delta function sitting here, right? So I claim the maximum value of E dagger is uh, the oh, okay okay the minimum value of E dagger is only zero. So so uh, imagine I have my reaction coordinate. I have E here. This is E A, this here is let us say P 1 square over 2 m. Okay. 
this is then E dagger. So, E dagger is E total energy E minus E A minus P 1 square over 2 A. So, E dagger cannot be less than 0. Okay. Why? Because I have this Dirac delta function sitting here. H prime is positive. So, if uh, E prime is less than 0, this Dirac delta function will immediately become 0. So, I will anyway get 0. Okay. So, what I get here is then 1 over h to the power of 3 n g r of E dividing surface d q. Okay. So, this integral becomes uh, E minus E a to 0. Uh, I notice this thing is minus d e dagger integral of d p 2 to 2 d p 3 n that I am not touching into delta of h prime minus e dagger. Uh, I take this integral, I play around with it a little bit. I take this minus and invert the limits. integral over dividing surface dq integral from dp2 to dp3 n delta of h prime minus e dagger so uh, let's just look at this expression what is this equal to uh, you note that let me erase a little bit stuff here I am out of space, so I am just erasing. So, I notice that this integral is nothing but g of e. Okay. So, this is then equal to 1 over h to the power of 3 n g r of e integral from 0 to e minus e a d e dagger g of e dagger of uh, e dagger uh, yeah yeah and i have put a little uh, dagger here sorry this is supposed to be ge prime it was uh, something is not okay i'm sorry i'm getting confused myself happens with me I will correct it all, all of it. Okay, now I am perfect. Now this is right. And I have put a little dagger here to denote that this integral does not involve integral of q1 and p1. This is an integral from q2 to q3n and p2 to p3n. Okay, uh, look at this. It does not involve integral of q1 and p1. So that's why I have put a dagger here to remind you of that. And I look at this integral and I see this. So, this is nothing but h to the power of 3 n uh, I, I apologize again this I should multiply by h to the power of 3 n minus 1 because I have this factor here. Okay, so, I have this integral and this integral into h to the power of 3 n minus 1 will give me uh, g. So, I get h to the power of 3 n minus 1 into w again dagger of uh, e minus e a. So, that is my integration limit here. Okay. So, at the end I get w dagger of e minus e a divided by h into g r. Okay. This E minus E A because of this limit. So, whatever is the limit here comes here. That is why I put E minus E A. W dagger again denote that the integration is only from Q2 to Q3n and P2 to P3n. Okay. And this factor of H3n minus 1 emerged because I had a division by H to the power of 3n here. Okay. 
So, this is really the final expression for the micro canonical transition state theory now. Uh, this expression looks like W dagger of E minus E A divided by H into G R of E. And the list of assumptions is very similar to what we had made earlier. Transition state exists, nuclei have been treated classically, we are integrating over Q and P. There is no recrossing, so the chi that we choose is the same as before. Uh, what we when we write this delta function, what it assumes is that all energy states are equally possible. So, I am not discriminating between two points in a phase space having the same energy, they are equally possible. Okay. So, that is called ergodicity, it has profound consequences to thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, so I have listed it here. And uh, final assumption is that Hamiltonian is separable in transition state geometry. So, following the same set of assumptions, we derive the expression for the transition state theory at constant energy. Thank you. Thank you.